All right, guys, let's get on to this Prentice Vice restoration. And uh, if you want to help support me at the bash, why don't you buy a t-shirt? I've got the link down in the descriptions. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. So the last few days I've been using the electrolysis to remove the rust off of all these parts. And uh, I'll grab one of these jaws. The screws that were holding these, uh, these jaws on were really rusted. A few other interesting notes. On the bottom here, we also have stamps, say 124. And on, is it this one here? I don't know if you can see it, there's a little one right there. It looks like a 19. So I don't know, these are probably like inspection numbers or something like that. Whoever the inspecting person. So here's another one. Uh, point being, so this is what it looks like when they come out of the electrolysis. And I've, I've put a little bit of WD-40 on here just to prevent flash rusting. But that's nice clean metal. There's nothing left on there. So in comparison, this is what it looked like after cleaning it. You can see it's uh, pretty, pretty rusty still. I'm gonna take you inside the shop and we're gonna put this in the electrolysis just so you can kind of see how that's set up. I have another video, I'll uh, put a card up here so you guys can check that out. All right guys, so the way this works, this is just water, and you use uh, washing soda, which is not the same as baking soda. It's similar, but not quite the same. You can buy it at Walmart, it's cheap. And uh, the formula is one tablespoon per gallon of water. So we've got about, uh, I don't know, three gallons of water here, I think. Uh, you could do this with like evaporust or something like that, but could, you know, three gallons of evaporust is pretty expensive. This system is really cheap, and uh, it won't hurt the metal. The only thing that this is going to remove, if you hook it up properly, is the rust, right? So, what we've got here, grab myself a piece of wire. Let's see, we'll run it through that hole, I guess. Wire it on here. And I got a little paper, we're going to make sure we get a good electrical connection. Got to have at least one clean spot to start, right? And honestly, it doesn't even have to be that clean as long as it does get connection. Sometimes you can just clip your electrode straight onto it if it's not submerged. This part won't submerge all the way. Anyway, we'll set this in here. most of it's in. Bring this over here, or this onto that. So the negative goes to the part you're going to clean. Positive goes to these electrodes. So I've got pieces of rebar and some steel wire. I try to keep water away from this system. Uh, it's okay as long as the copper isn't in the water, but you can start to, uh, you know, leaching copper into the system and that's bad. And I have just a small charger, an old, really old battery charger, probably from the 50s over here. So let's hook it up. All right, so you can see we're drawing about six amps here at 12 volts. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see the white bubbles and the water is kind of swirling a little bit. Well, that's, that's uh, the cleaning action happening here. But what's actually happening is it splits the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen so it's probably a good idea to try to keep sparks away from this whole setup be smart about what you're doing and we are playing with water and electricity so study up on the subject and i would also suggest that you don't use stainless steel for your consumable probes here study up on aaron brockovich and chromates all right guys we'll come back when the soup is ready and we'll pull this out and i'll show you kind of what i do in, in between all right guys soup's on uh, let's get this thing out of the swamp water here. All right, let's go take this out into the light and start cleaning. You can see that stuff is starting to kind of flake off here. I always kind of like to try to dry the casting off a little bit first. Once it dries, when you brush it, 
it'll come off really nice and easy. You could brush it right now, but it just kind of makes a slurry. So, first thing I like to do is I'll use a razor blade and on these uh, flat machine surfaces, scrape it. That will get quite a good bit of it. So, I'll move you guys in and see if you can see the powder that's kind of coming up. See that there? So that's removing damage. Right? Anyway, I'll go over that everywhere where there's machine surfaces. There's not very many on here. And then I go over it with just a hand wire brush. And if it's done, that will pretty much get it nice and clean. You can see that's nice and silvery now. A little bit still. Not much. And I'll just go over the whole outside of the casting and get it all cleaned up really nice. And if there's more rust on here, it looks like there might be. You might have to go back into the tank. Alright guys, I got most of the rust off of here, so I did discover one thing. If I can get in close enough. I can see where that pin comes through now. You know, this pin that locks that nut in place. Uh, the nut is actually not pressed in there tight or anything like that. You could wiggle it around. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother taking that out. It's clean enough. That nut is in great shape in there. So I think we're just going to leave it. All right, guys, that is it for the teardown. Uh, next part will be uh, making some replacement parts. And uh, why don't you check out the videos coming up over here, and see you guys around.